Good evening, everybody. The music fan is back, bringing smiles to the faces, knowledge to the people, and most importantly, music to the masses. Back with another Are You In? Today, we are taking a look at the newest Stone Temple Pilots album entitled Perdida. What can I say about Stone Temple Pilots that I haven't already said before? I reviewed their album from 2018, really enjoying it. I also have started talking about their whole entire discography and digging through discographies. Unfortunately, I don't think I ever finished it, but I came pretty close. But that needs to be resolved at a future point. Anyways, if you don't know who Stone Temple Pilots are, they are one of the best grunge bands, in my opinion, one of my favorite bands of all time. What made this band stand out compared to the rest of the grunge bands is like two things. The first thing is Robert DeLeo as a bass player, one of the most underrated bass players of all time, such a musical bass player, someone who complements everything, but also can make very interesting bass lines at the same time. But the biggest thing is the versatility that this band had throughout the decades. Starting off with something a little bit more grungy, dirty, a little bit more heavy metal-esque at times with core, going on to something that is a little bit softer rock, still has that grunge feel, but also has some acoustic, folky, jazzy ideas like Purple. Going completely different, going a little bit more psychedelic, jazzy, acoustic on Tiny Music. Going back to hard on number four, even throwing a little bit of country in there and a little bit of Doris-esque flair as well. You get something a little bit more experimental like Shangri-La Dida, and you get something even more classic rock like Stone Temple Pilots. Fortunately, after 2001, you don't get a lot of Stone Temple Pilots because of hiatuses, because of drug addiction from Scott Whelan. You get some fights inside the band and people doing other work like Velvet Revolver or Talk Show. You do get one album in 2010 and then, of course, there's the whole legal battles between everybody. There's uh, Scott Whelan being fired from the band. You have Chester Bennington coming in for a minute. Then. After an EP leaving, fortunately he passed away, so did Scott Whelan. So there was a lot of turmoil for this band for a very long time. That's why I was so surprised in 2017, the end of 2017, to hear that not only they were coming back, but they were going to be putting out new music and introducing a whole new vocalist in Jeff Gutt. The result, in my opinion, is a very strong outing from them. It doesn't necessarily change the style of what they've done. It doesn't involve them. But what is so good is that Jeff Gutt has a very similar voice to Scott Whelan. And because of that, you get a band who doesn't really miss a beat and in fact gets to play around and experiment more and try more complexities in the things that they've already mastered. It made my top 50 of 2018 I may have been a little bit too high on it at first, but I still really enjoy a lot of what's there. What I've also really enjoyed from the album is a lot of the ballads, a lot of the acoustic stuff. That's where a lot of the jazz comes out. So when I heard that they were putting out an acoustic album, my mind was super excited because to me, that harkens back to the Purple and Tiny Music days, two of my favorite albums from them. You know, Tiny Music is very underrated in a lot of people's eyes. To me, it is as well. So to see them be able to come back with an acoustic album, not just that, all original ideas, and only two years after their previous album. It's cool to see and cool to know that they are really engaged in putting new stuff out. So, of course, I was not going to miss this. In my opinion, I was rewarded very nicely. This album does harken back to both Purple and Tiny Music, and even throws a lot of the ideas of Led Zeppelin, kind of these classical, psychedelic, jazzy, folky approaches. Does it do it as well as these albums or these bands in general? Not necessarily, but it does enough to really satiate what I'm looking for. The best times are when the band goes full out acoustic, full out folky, and throws a couple of curveballs your way. So for example, She's My Queen, very Led Zeppelin-esque. I could definitely 
feel that vibe coming off of this particular song. I love how the song builds. I love the multi-layered approaches on this song. I also really enjoy the different melody lines, especially on the, if I could find a way. But what also is on there is a really solid flute solo. They don't really do a lot of the heavy guitar solos on here. There are some guitar solos, but there's also some variety in who does the solo. I didn't know the time. Also has a flute ending as well. What is better for this one though, is there is a lot of really cool and colorful jazz chord progressions. There's also some really solid work from Dean DeLeo on guitar, which he does really solid in general, he's always been a really undergraded guitarist, and this album still shows that he can do some really colorful ideas, even when it's not full on crunch mode. Guitar is absolutely beautiful on here. I really love how the verses start off really crunchy and really dissonant before opening up to something with a major seven in it. Also, Rob DeLeo, of course, can't speak enough about him. He does really solid on a lot of these songs. There isn't a lot of very percussive bass lines, there's not a lot of really complex bass lines, but again, what he does so well throughout, like I Didn't Know, and Three Wishes, and Fare Thee Well, and Sunburst, he's used as a complimentary piece, complimenting everything around him in such a nice way. It's how I would go about as a bass player, adding a little bit of color and a little bit of complexity, but never becoming the on main part of a, of a song. On the post-chorus part, there's a really solid bass line and one of the ones that stand out the most, in my opinion, on this album. Other songs that are very jazzy, Three Wishes, has some jazz parts in it, especially on the guitar solo that goes in between different keys, and I really enjoy that. One part that I don't enjoy as well is some of the dissonant work on here, especially on the chorus. So. There's this part at the beginning of the chorus and you hear this G7 being played. So there's an F in the chord, but Jeff Gunn uses G then F sharp. So you get this really crunchy part that to me just doesn't work. It, there's this disconnect that just feels weird. Though I really enjoy the vibe of this whole entire song. Feeling a little bit like Pretty Penny, but with a little bit more dissonance. Another song that has some interesting jazzy parts is fairly well. It doesn't have as much of it. It feels a little bit more simplistic than everything else, but I still really enjoy a lot of it. I love the, when this be love, love, love over me, the beautiful harmonies on there. And the use of falsetto from Jeff is phenomenal. What also stands out on there is the slide guitar solo, really solid all together. Rounding out the really solid songs on here is Sunburst. It's kind of a weird ender because this is one of the only ones that uses a lot of percussion and not just that, a whole entire drum kit. It has a much more active drum and bass part and it kind of issues the vibe of the rest of the album. The verses aren't too interesting, but once you get to the chorus itself, that's where this kicks in. I love the chord progression here. You go E, to C major seven, then you have this F sharp minor seven to F major seven. Absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite chord progressions in general. The chorus, the guitar solo, it's a great way of ending this album. It ends with the string part from Perdita. We'll get to Perdita in a second, but it is a really nice way of ending this album. However, there are still some parts on here that I kind of have issues with. Starting off with, you find yourself while losing your heart. It definitely could have found itself on Tiny Music or Purple. I really enjoy the intro guitar part, so beautiful. But the problem is that the verses are a little stagnant, even though it adds some nice color at times, especially with some sus seven chords. It just is a little bit too long, in my opinion, for not enough interesting activity. The choruses add some color, there's a nice guitar solo, but it really isn't much else to consider the length of how long this song is. Pratita, the main track on this album, has this mariachi tango feel, and it just feels a little bit too over the top at times, especially when it goes back to the intro idea. Not a bad song. 
and I really enjoyed the idea of using Perdita as personification of a person that this person has loved or lost. They also have Years, which is a nice song. It is another one of these jazzy ones. Rob DeLeo is the one who sings vocals on here. It's not bad. It just feels a little bit too cheesy at times, especially when you get the sax solo at the end that feels a little bit too long. But I really do enjoy the chord progression. Nice jazz standard idea. It feels like it's taken from either swing air jazz or kind of like a Beach Boys-esque flair at times. I just wish that the vocals were a little bit stronger and I wish that the sax solo wasn't as long. Miles Away to me is the most frustrating song on the album though. It has this waltz feel which not bad, kind of like carnival-esque, waltz-esque vibe, kind of dark, but it just goes on a little bit too long again. And the change in key, even though it's a cool idea, it doesn't really work for this song. That being said, there isn't a horrible song on here. Even like I Once Sat At Your Table, an absolutely gorgeous instrumental. It doesn't hit the highs as Daisy in my opinion, but a really nice solid instrumental with guitar, flute, and strings. Very short, very simplistic, falls very nicely on this album. Lyrically, a lot of these songs are about love, love, loss, trying to find yourself after love. Not many of them stand out in my opinion, but they are nice additions to the vibe that the rest of this album is. If I was to find the best lyrics on here, Perdita is pretty good. I think the idea of I didn't know the time isn't bad about being in this relationship that you're not happy with but are afraid of letting it end. The idea of three wishes about being in love with someone who isn't ready for it and doesn't feel the same way but wishing that they were. I think those are interesting. Everything else kind of falls into kind of cliche mode but overall it's not necessarily a detriment to the album. And that being said, it's a really solid album. I think this is a type of album that I wouldn't go back to as much even though I do like the approach of this, the fact that it does harken back to some of my favorite Stone Temple Pilots albums, but I think that there's some things missing there. I don't think there's enough oomph at times. It's beautiful, definitely beautiful, but there's just a little bit something lacking, a little bit more substance. I think that would have definitely worked, maybe a little bit more diversity. I would say definitely give this album a full listen. It's just off the mark of being Play on repeat. If there was a little bit more substance, if there was a little bit more diversity, I think it definitely could have warranted a play on repeat. I still probably say that the album from 2018 is a little bit better, but I like where this is going and if they could combine both aspects a little bit better, maybe we can get another tiny music, maybe we can get another purple. Until then, I'm happy to settle with this and then see where the band goes. That is my time. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you love or hate this album and your reasons why. Let me know what other albums from 2020 you'd like me to review, share this with your friends, and most importantly, subscribe to my channel. That way I know that you enjoy what I'm doing and want to see this channel become bigger and better for the future. I'll be back later on with another Are You Win? Until then, this is Music Fan, and I'm signing off.